Hey friendos, Casey Ferris here. Thanks for watching another video here on YouTube that's on the channel that I have. Today, we're gonna take a look at doing some fancy fancy inside of DaVinci Resolve. Check it out. Yeah, the backyard. Nice. So I get a lot of people asking me, how do I track things in DaVinci Resolve? Now we've gone over how to track like windows for color grading. There's ways that you can track like a lens flare and like resolve effects and things like that. But as for like sticking an object to footage and match moving it like this, that's something that is a little bit less obvious. So we're gonna take a look at one way of doing that today. And a couple notes before we start, something like this is probably not something that you would want to do in Resolve if you want a really nice polished result. This looks pretty good for a quick effect, but there's not a lot of changes and tweaks that you can make like you could in a traditional compositing program. So if you really wanna make something nice, I'd recommend doing this in After Effects or Fusion, but it is a nice simple effect that you can do in Resolve, which I think is pretty cool and wanted to share with you guys. Another note, if you're into drone footage, we have a couple things available at groundcontrolcolor.com. First of all is our new training, how to edit DJI Spark footage. This is a training series that is done in Adobe Premiere that's all about techniques and tips for editing a drone highlight reel. It's really a lot of fun, and if you work with a lot of drone footage, definitely check it out. We also have quite a few drone LUTs that are available, including our newest pack, Heron, which is a bunch of subtle film looks that are designed for D-Log. So if you shoot with a Mavic or a Phantom or an Inspire, anything that shoots D-Log, these are really great for any type of footage like that. You can even get our updated D-Log to Rec. 709 LUT for free that's from that Heron pack. Just click on free LUTs and click free D-Log to Rec. 709 LUT. So I'm gonna show you the same process that I used on this clip on this new clip because you know, it's more interesting and stuff to see new things. I have my footage laid out here in the timeline in the edit tab. And the first thing I wanna do is add some text because I'm gonna do pretty much the same type of title. In my effects library, I'm gonna to go to titles and text and just drag that to the timeline. And I'm gonna make this the exact same length and position as my clip. I can double click the text and that brings up info here in the inspector. Let's give it a cool name. How about above the farm? Give it a font that isn't miserable. That looks pretty good. Now, a lot of the fancy schmancy happens in the color tab. And look what happens if I switch over to the color tab. Here I have my first clip and I have my overlay. And then I just have my third clip, but I don't have a separate clip for the text. And the reason for that is because this is a title and that's not something that you can color grade inside of the color tab. What you have to do is make a compound clip. So I'm gonna right click on this and say new compound clip. And that's kind of like just saving this out as a video render without actually rendering it. So as far as Resolve is concerned, this is just a video clip. Now, if I switch over to color, here I have it as a separate clip. One problem is I can't see through this because it has a black background. I have two options. I can either go to composite mode and just hit add, or if I like the black background, but just want to trim it, I can use the cropping parameter here in the inspector. And so if I just crop this down to be kind of like a box around my text, just keep it classy, you know, maybe something like that. And look, we're pretty much there, except for the whole moving with the uh, things thing. So I'm gonna switch over to my color tab, and this is where the fanciness happens. I'm gonna select the clip that is my footage, and I'm gonna go to the tracker panel, which is the fourth little tab over here. It says tracker. It usually comes up in window mode. Go to stabilizer mode, and I'm gonna go over to these dots and make sure I'm on classic stabilizer. I'm gonna leave everything how it is and hit this play sign to track it. It's gonna make roughly a jillion little points and track the motion of the clip. After that, it's going to do nothing. So I'm gonna go back to my tracker panel under the dots and then hit copy track data. And then here in my little timeline, which by the way, if you don't see this, just click timeline right here. I can select the clip above my video clip, which happens to be this number four right here. Make sure I'm on classic stabilizer, hit the dots and paste track data. That again is going to do nothing until I hit stabilize. All it's doing is loading this stabilized data inside of this clip. The other thing I'm gonna do is make sure this strong parameter is at negative 100. Because what we're pretty much doing here is stabilizing this footage and then reversing the stabilization so that things stick to this footage. So if I leave it at 100 like it probably is by default and hit stabilize, look what's gonna happen. It's just gonna act insane which I don't know, maybe you want that. Maybe you want crazy world, but I don't. 
So here I'm going to hit negative 100 and hit stabilize. And it's going to reverse that motion and stick my title to my footage. And that's pretty much it. Honestly, this is a really uh, quick and dirty method of doing a match move. It's not perfect. If you want to do a legit match move, you probably want to use After Effects or Fusion or some kind of legit compositing software. But it's a pretty cool effect and pretty quick to do inside of Resolve. So that's the exact same way I use to stabilize this footage. Again, not perfect, but pretty good results for not a lot of effort. So if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. If you like this, hit like. And for more post-production, DaVinci Resolve tutorials, all the things like that, make sure to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. My name again is Casey Ferris. I will catch you next time.